So let's just jump into it. Starting with it, acting like oh, this is all just it. me, and that's something you really need to fix. I'm gonna f bash your f head against the wall with a brick if you don't shut the f up. So that is just a small piece of a leak around longtime YouTube creator Alex Elmsley, otherwise known as I'm Alex. So if you don't know, he's a 25 year old British YouTube. Oh my gosh, I always forget how young everybody is. 25 is so young. That's 10 years younger than me, for the record. I'm a whole decade older than this kid. Uber with around 2 million subscribers. He's known for doing a lot of commentary and reaction content. But now he's facing incredibly detailed allegations of abuse from his ex girlfriend, who's another creator by the name of Alice Hez, who has about a million followers on TikTok. And over the weekend, she released several videos and logs of their interactions along with an 82 page statement. With that saying, it's best it was made public how horrible this- So first, I just want to say, I don't know who she is as well. So I don't know these people. So my observation is going to be about bubbles they fit into and then tropes they sort of fit into. So here we are with another, you know, girlfriend exposing a boyfriend as a toxic person. She does have a lot of details on a lot of receipts. And so it looks, you know, pretty, it looks pretty accurate. To be fair, we'll see in a minute. There's gonna, there's a leaked call, which is interesting. And again, how you talk to your partner in public, but especially in private says so much about you. Again, as a married person who's in a healthy relationship versus her toxic ones, I will say how your partner talks to you in private is so specifically important. There's this narrative I see from people who say, oh, well, how we talk in private is different because people don't they just don't get it my partner and i make a concerted effort to talk more kind to one another especially in private to make sure we are making an effort to humanize one another not that we don't in public but this idea is really interesting to me where people say oh well in private like we talk to each other like just so differently yeah but it shouldn't be abusively so we'll get into that but here's another story about a girl exposing her ex-boyfriend. I think this is probably good. I think it's probably more good than bad, but let's see. Person with a platform is, I'd hate to see another woman go through this. They're sharing a link to a Google Drive folder with audio and video files documenting the alleged abuse. You can access the Google Doc yourself if you wanna go through everything. With that said, you know, what we see here is Alice describing how it started when, quote, small arguments worsened to the point where he would turn on his camera and start shouting at her on call. Now, when it's too f late, you admit that you did everything f this is in private. From my understanding, if you can see the Discord outline, so this is their DMs, right? And then this is like her friends list and these are the Discord she's on. But this, as far as I can understand, is a private call. So this is how he talks to her when no one's there to see. Turn on his camera and start shouting at her on call. Now, when it's too late, you admit that you did everything wrong. But when it actually matters, when you should lay down like a good dog, you don't do it. it I think like oh, this is all just it. me, and that's something you really need to f fix. I'm gonna f bash your f head against the wall with a brick if you don't shut the f up. Your boyfriend's a f famous internet celebrity and doesn't trust these people because he has to keep his circle small. Because you might not have anything to f lose, because your life might be down the f drain, but I still have quite a lot that I would like to f give. Also, the screenshots that Alice shared appear to show more of. So, obviously, I, from my understanding, that video is in private. And again, and to be fair, I pre-watched this because I watched it with my husband. And I was like, oh, I was like, if we ever talk to each other like this, that would be the biggest red flag. We do not talk to each other like this. But I know in my toxic relationships, that's how conversations went. It was angry, cruel things were said. Both were toxic where, again, healthy people do not put up with this behavior. So if you're willing to hear this and then move in with a guy, if you're willing to have a baby with a person like this, whether it's a man or woman, regardless of gender, you have a level of toxicity within you that's allowing you to do it, which is why it's so commendable that like she was able to break up and move on because genuinely it is when you're in a toxic relationship, you just think, well, it will get better. Something will change. And it could, but most of the time, you also have to recognize like you're toxic enough to accept this treatment from somebody else. Like my husband and I now, I would never. The amount of like, oh, what's happening here? Like, no, this is not how you talk to somebody you love. I think a romantic partner, you have to make such a concerted effort to be intensely kind, especially when you're upset because it's real and your feelings are gonna feel more intense, but you choose so radically the people that are in your life. So choose it with a healthy perspective versus a toxic one. Toxic perspectives allow you to make excuses for people's bad behavior, which I understand as such a mom trope myself, you want to make excuses for people, but make sure you're just giving people room to grow without giving them excuses to stay stagnant. In those more than ones, he calls her a dumb whore. He also uses the N word. So to call your, your partner a dumb whore. <laughs> 
Oh, unless we're both gay and we're being extra fruity today, absolutely not. Telling her to kill herself, saying things like just die in a fucking hole and please bury yourself. He said, I don't even know why I explained that. that. I just hate people making it seem like I'm doing it actually rude, like unalive yourself. I just told you how to make six figures. It's annoying. Like, I don't know if he's just saying that. Like, cause you know, I think we all talk exaggerated, but who is it? Who is it at is the question. So that's where I'm confused about because I would talk to my siblings like that. Like, oh my God, like go and alive yourself. But like, it'd be a, a very hyperbolic joke, right? But see how in these text messages, it looks like he's saying it to her. And then I'm like, why are you talking to your partner like that? So look, she says, stop moaning. She says, sort your head out, right? And then he says, then you start going on about how you're scared to move just blink in a blinking hole and you sad little blank. Is he talking to her or is he upset about something and talking to her about it? That will be okay. Yeah, I heard you the first 10 times I was, he misspells so many words. I hate you. Why does he, why does he talk this way? So he says, I hate you. You got mad straight away. Didn't let me talk. Didn't listen to me. Please hurry yourself in the blank garden. You're a child. Who, why are they talking to each other this way? This is so weird. So Cam Cam says he, he was trying to help her out with YouTube stuff and she didn't want his advice. She has almost a million followers on TikTok for the record. This is so weird. But they're in their 20s, so I can't tell if they're just so toxic. They don't even know. But this is the weirdest energy. This is so toxic. This is so inappropriate. Like, if this is your relationship, get out. Period. And then appearing to go so far as to threaten to do it himself, writing in one conversation, I'm going to fucking kill you. I'm going to break your neck. Right now, That's crazy. Uh, okay, because you're constantly insulting me, get your head checked. He says, because you decided to pretend I made it up. What the F? And then she said, no, made what up? And he said, oh my God. And she said, I admitted what I did. And he said, I'm going to unalive you. She said, sorry for my tone. That's not abusive at all. I'm going to break your neck. What the, what is this? This is, this is, this is frustrating to me, I think, because I don't even know how did this begin? Who raised you? What happened? This is so inappropriate. They're so toxic together. I hope she breaks the cycle of toxicity. I hope she realizes like, you need to go to therapy, girl, because you dated this person and you moved in with him. Like what, what the F happened? Why was this ever okay? That's what I'm saying. Healthy people would see this and be like, uh, block. I'm not gonna engage with this person. And I mean that not as a way to blame, but to explain why we end up in toxic relationships. He's famous, he has status. Like maybe, maybe he's a good guy. Everyone thinks he's a good guy. I never liked his channel from day one. That's why I never watched him. He always gave me sleazy behavior, but also I'm way older. I'm not the demographic, right? Jesse says the way he called himself a celebrity is so funny because he is some nobody. Listen, he might be a YouTube celebrity and that's big enough for some people, but he's not. I mean, he's like, he's not like the biggest content creator, but he's got a big following. John says, are they drunk? Maybe they could definitely be intoxicated, right? They could be high. They could be drunk. I'm going to break your neck is the craziest thing I've ever seen in my life. I, in all of my toxicity, have never been spoken to in that way. I've been spoken to in a lot of toxic ways. I've toxically talked to my partners. We have never threatened violence like this, as far as I remember. I don't know. Oh, good question from Ingrid. British people of the chat, is this normal in your culture? Good question. Is this how the Brits talk? Is this a cultural expectation? Because I have never had a partner threaten to like, hurt me. That's very interesting. I've never been in that kind of a toxic relationship. Do it himself, writing in one conversation, I'm going to fucking kill you. I'm going to break your neck. Right, and all of these are just some of the insults, threats, or otherwise manipulative and emotionally abusive texts that Alice says that- What? Alex sent to her over the course of their relationship. And unfortunately- So wait, that, that's from him too? From all from iCloud, you're a huge fuck up. I guess fuck is the word she keeps screening. Fucking freak, weirdo, slimy, slag, unlovable. I don't love you anymore, stupid. Everything I do will amount to nothing. You're on a never ending ego trip, breaks up with me, blocks me, constantly called me a dog to his mom. Okay, so she's, ex okay, I get it. Tells me to shut up in front of his mates. I get more important fuck than your feelings. I don't know what this possibly is, especially when your feelings are based on absolute wank that you're being a dumb woman and move on. Ooh, girl manipulative and emotionally abusive text that Alice says that Alex sent to her over the course of their relationship. And unfortunately, Alice also says that it gets worse, saying that once they moved in together, it sometimes became. It gets worse? You moved in with a person? So is this before they moved in? That's what I'm curious about. How abusive was he b before they moved in together and then they moved in together? That's what I'm curious about. T in chat says, this is not how British people talk. I'm from London. All right, shout out London. In physical, describing one instance where she says he grabbed her hood and pulled her back until she fell on the floor, saying that when she got up to run away, he grabbed her, put her in a headlock and covered her mouth. And saying after- Hold up, we're gonna read that. 
We had the worst arguments I've ever experienced with anyone. But after the move, it became even worse. On the fourth day of living together, on the fourth day of living together, on, on the 19th of October, he had taken it to the next level and got physical in a fight. It started as a screaming argument where I begged him to leave me alone and just to stop. I ended up trying to get away from him and he, fo he followed me. I went to walk downstairs and he grabbed my hood and pulled me back until I fell to the floor. He told me that I'm not getting away, so I got up and made a run for the bathroom. He gets in my way and grabs me, puts me in a headlock and covers my mouth because I'm screaming for him to get off. I got to the bathroom and locked it behind me and he screams from another side, calling me crazy, telling me to leave the house after I've asked him to leave me alone. Hello? Hello? Cam Cam says, read the 86 page Google Doc. Girl, I know I, that's a little too much for me. I will be real with you. No offense. And I mean this with the greatest amount of empathy. I already know a toxic and abusive relationship when I see one. I don't want to get pulled into these negative people's lives. But I'm making this video now for my audience to recognize this is the data you need to know you're in a bad relationship and you need to get the fuck out. You need to get the fuck out. Okay. You need to get the fuck out. This is not good. And I am really sick of people saying like, you're just being judgy. You just don't get our relationship. You just don't get it. Yes, to an extent, we're all going to have even healthy relationships that other people don't understand. But this is in no way justifiable as a healthy relationship. You cannot get physical with your partner against their consent, degrade them, yell at them, act toxic towards them, and then be like, but it's healthy. You just don't get it. If this is, no. Mama Simon, Auntie Brittany says, no, okay, you're not going to go ahead, girl. Try to debate bro me into a into a win here. Go ahead. Try to win in a debate bro to me right now that this is in any way healthy. No, cheating, lying, deceiving, physical abuse. Absolutely not. Go to therapy, break up, do something. But this is not okay, period. On the floor saying that when she got up to run away, he grabbed her, put her in a headlock and covered her mouth and saying after that argument, there were days where he would just scream. Some other days after the argument, he would scream in my face, telling me multiple times to him in her face and tell her to kill herself. multiple. OK, to unalive herself multiple times in arguments over small things. He would walk away, then come back angry as if he couldn't leave without screaming, having me down, having me back down and be silent till I broke down. This evolved to the point where I would be shaking and scared for my life every time he came close, call the cops and was in the same room as me whilst arguing he still blamed me for our arguments and to get back at me he started with small petty things like breaking my glasses without me knowing and throwing them away in the trash he even helped me go look for them pretending he was innocent until i finally suspected he did it he did indeed throw them away and he laughed whilst admitting doing it acting like it wasn't a big deal girl multiple times even saying that it got to the point where she would be shaking and scared for her life every time he came closer was in the same room as her while arguing and as far as people possibly asking her you know why would you stay in this relationship she seemed to touch on that saying believe me i wish i could turn back time but i believed his lies when he apologized to me and i really tried to believe he would stop going so far if i asked him to but there you know alice no that's I normal i thought i was good enough for him to stop calling me a blank or tell me to die or threaten to leave in every argument this is the toxicity this is what I mean to say, and I don't mean this to mean you're at fault. You are never at fault for the abuse that people inflict upon you. But if you need a point of data, this is what you need to meditate on. Why am I allowing someone to talk to me this way? And then why am I thinking to justify it? Because I'm toxic enough to think that this is just a part of what love is. Love does not include abuse. It might be a way in which you could separate those two things. You can love someone and abuse them. That's true, but that doesn't mean that it's justifiable. I can understand the nuance there. I'll, I'll meet you halfway. And at the same time, I do think a life lesson disguises itself as love. And then when the abuse happens, you're meant to learn the lesson, you know? So obviously she had a toxic enough mindset. I've been there myself where you think I'm special. I'll change him. He'll change for me. He'll change for our life. Maybe if we have a kid, maybe if we do this, maybe if we do this, maybe if I just, I understand, but also Healthy people would say, oh, I'm not going to date a person who treats me this way. Bye. But the problem is you get hooked and then you think, well, I can't abandon them. Everyone on the Internet is always telling me like people are so weak in relationships. Oh, people just break up for the silliest reasons. People never want to go through hard times with you. Hard times isn't what happens in the marriage. It's what happens around the marriage. Hard like times is a part of life. Like somebody gets cancer or there's a car accident or somebody loses their job. It's not my partner abuses me. The hard times you're still you're, the hard times that happen in life and you're supposed to stick through them is 
cancer and a car accident, not abuse. Yes. Are we following? Please take notes. This is the problem. People think abuse, marital abuse is what people are supposed to stick through the hard times. No, no, no. That is the wrong piece of data. We are taking the wrong piece of data and putting it in our minds and staying in bad relationships because we think that's the data. Ooh, Monday's video is going to be so good. I'm stoked. Ooh, people get categorization so bad. And I, I, you know, I make mistakes too, but this is not what they're talking about when they say like things get hard. Marriage is easy. Life is tough. Apologized to me. And I really tried to believe he would stop going so far if I asked him to. Though there, you know, Alice did eventually get herself out. They're even appearing to get this recording while she was packing her things to leave. Good for her. I'm glad you got out, girl. Let's go. And then you look like a f***ing miserable f***ing little f*** all the time. Like your face is annoying to look at like when I come downstairs. They're saying that even after she left, he wouldn't leave her alone. And so with that saying, she's decided to speak out now because... She said, this is a sensitive subject for me as I have struggled to figure out how to put it into words. I've been threatened by Alex to not come out with anything at all and keep quiet. Or is he... Cr or he will create a contradicting story to discredit my own, but I'm not scared anymore. No matter what is said in response to the statement, I know I've said my piece and can move on with my life. I made this document as a compilation of my experiences whilst being with Alex, and I have bit, and I have put screenshots of those accounts under the corresponding paragraphs. This will be as long as I wait. This will be a long one as I want to start from the beginning, so you can fully, so you can understand the full story and heavy burden this has on me. Because he's threatened to, quote, create a contradicting story to discredit her own. And seemingly with that, also acknowledging that she also insulted Alex in their conversations, writing, In no way am I trying to make myself look as if I never said anything mean. I stooped down to his level and became reckless with my language to try to... I stooped down to his level and became reckless with my language to prove a point. Now, I want to say that this is, this is just what I mean by toxicity. So when you're in a toxic relationship, it's a spectrum. So she's obviously toxic enough to be in the relationship, but not toxic enough to abuse her partner. But she might engage in toxicity is retaliation at her partner, which I think is different. I think you can sort of like become more toxic to where his level is of toxicity in order to engage with him. But I would say this is again, what a healthy person refuses to not do. And again, I know how tempting it is. Oh my God, girl, I know how tempting it is. Let me tell you, I am tempted. The universe is always tempting me. I'm a content creator. People are always saying shit and engaging in toxicity. And it's, this is how I know I'm healthy because I don't repeat patterns. And I know the brain part of me that's like engage with it. If I engage with it, I'm the toxic one. Ultimately, toxic people are going to be toxic and you know you're one of them when you engage with them, when you're friends with them in a very like specific way, not in a distance way, like, hey, I'm open with boundaries, but in a this is my core group, these people represent me way. You know what I'm saying? I have friends who are in their own way toxic and they're on a journey, but that has nothing to do with me. I'm not condoning it. I'm not promoting it. I'm not saying it's normal. I'm saying they're going through something. Then there's the people that are like, this is normal. This is just how people are. This is how relationships are, Brittany. You just don't get it, Brittany. She did engage in toxicity. And I'm proud of her for acknowledging that. I've been there myself. Trust me, as tempting as it is, it is so much better not to engage. But I get it. Ooh, I get it. Ooh, I get it, girl. I get it. Prove a point. They're even appearing to have changed his contact name in her phone to racist N-word at one point. And on top of that, she admitted to slapping him in the face at one point. But her saying that she only did that after he backed her into a corner while screaming at her. And with all that said, as far as the other side of this, uh, we haven't seen a response from Alex yet. And I mean that as far as him releasing any sort of public statement, as well as we reached out last night to see if he had anything to say. As of recording, he has not responded. Though among all the other people who have reacted to this, notably, this includes several internet personalities who have been a part of Alex's circle at one point or another, such as with you. YouTuber Will and E saying there have been rumors of Alex's behavior last year and also saying the severity of the abuse that Alice published was far worse than anything I'd heard being discussed. That Google Drive is fucking abhorrent and what he put her through is inexcusable. Also Twitch. I would say that this is really important too is that these things don't come out of anywhere. There usually is a line of receipts. There is, there is usually a pattern of some sort. But one of you said... Victor said, I feel like being toxic back as a response is part of fight or flight, maybe. Am I wrong? I think there's a difference between self-defense. There's a difference be between like um, uh, trauma reaction. There's a difference between engaging. Engaging in toxicity is about the why. Is she feeling vengeful? Is she feeling like she wants to retaliate? It depends on why she engaged with it. And I think that's really important to look at. Miss 
Mistel, Mistel, Mistella, Mistella. I don't know how to say this girl. Could a healthy person be manipulated into being toxic? Yes, under psychological abuse. Example, there was a police interrogation of a man, 17 hours long. The man basically went insane temporarily and admitting to killing his father who was still alive. That is a good example of how a perfectly healthy person, I don't know if this person is healthy, but let's say, could be under so much duress they almost go insane. It's why you have to be very careful about how who you hang out with. If you're in an environment where somebody is consistently invalidating you and then breaking you down, it's gonna feel so psychologically damaging. That's why gaslighting, real gaslighting is so psychologically damaging because you start to question your own reality. This is always about context, but of course a healthy person could be psychologically tortured into not just toxicity. Okay, let's categorize toxicity as specific. Being a toxic person is not about being an unhealthy person, though it's the same thing in some ways. When I was borderline, there was a time in which I wasn't toxic, but I still wasn't in remission because the toxicity is different than the unhealthy part of your mental health. So toxicity isn't just because of mental health. Toxicity is also about belief. Like maybe you're a toxic person because you think you're better than other people and you think other people deserve to be squashed underneath the heel of your your shoe. There's a level of toxicity there that doesn't necessarily have to do with mental health, but could do with like belief systems. So I would say that toxic behavior could be like toxic positivity, right? And it is always related to sort of a variation of mental health, but not necessarily a mental, a diagnosable mental health issue. Does that make sense? Everything could be sp- you know, split up into different categories, but I'm not sure if she was engaging in toxic behavior enough to stay in the relationship or if she was just justifying toxic behavior because she thought it was like a part of a narrative. I don't know if she was mentally health, like like if he beat her down so badly, she was just being unhealthy. There's so many, there's so much nuance to this. So I want to give everybody their fair, you know, representation here, but I could never know the details of what's happening. It's probably a combination of many things. Or what if you just have a really good person who's going through a really hard time? Maybe you have a really good person that got addicted to a medication their doctor prescribed to them and it caused them to be, you know, sort of unhealthy. Are they a toxic person at their core Or are they just like going through something right now? It depends on the uh, context is so important. 12 says, aren't toxic belief systems caused by mental health issues? No, no, I would not say so. Lots of people have toxic mental health or toxic belief systems that have to don't have to do directly with mental health issues. Well, it depends on what we well, how do you define mental health? I think I'm open to a discussion on what do we define as mental health? Because some people just like it, racism isn't a mental health issue. Homophobia is not a mental health issue. It could be your homophobia or your racism could be because could be because of a mental health issue, but it's not always because of a mental health issue. I would say it's pretty fucking toxic to think you are better than somebody else because of your skin color. Like that's pretty fucking toxic, bro. But also, what does that have to do with mental health? Right? Isn't that just like a belief system? So I think that's how I would see it. But then some people because they've been so abused, let's say by a certain skin color for so long, could form a trauma around that skin color. And then maybe that would be because of mental health. Oh, I'm racist because of mental health could be a thing. But most, I would say that is probably more likely a belief system, a thought process around it. Like is sexism and misogyny mental health? Not always, probably not most of the time. That's just a belief system. That's a narrative of belief. So I, you know, that's how I would think about it. Streamer Mia Mon saying Alex's behavior was something, quote, well known throughout the industry. We're also adding that she found it genuinely hard to believe the creators close to Alex had no idea this was going on. And creator Mimulus writing, I would usually wait until both parties have said their side publicly before speaking about it. You know, I will say this though, as somebody who knows way too many toxic people in the industry, I will say usually it's mutually toxic and that's why you don't get involved. Listen to me when I say this, like infamous divorces that happened in the last year or so, That was a mutually toxic, abusive relationship. And everybody knew that it was happening and it was even on stream. And no, we didn't say anything really because they were both obviously consenting to the abuse while still having their consent violated in different ways, right? Both of them were hurting each other in a multitude of ways. I mean, we literally watch abusive couples stream together and people don't, it's not about about knowing. It's about saying, do we have to get involved if both parties are saying they are consenting to it? This is always the question about when do we tell someone's story in public? Does she have the right to tell Alex's story? I think she should, personally, from Brittany's values. I think, because I believe in redemption, Alex could be redeemed after many, many years of therapy and help and stuff. But also, 
I think right now it's important to warn people not to engage with him. But then will they listen? You know how many women I know who actively choose abusive people in the scene because they go, I didn't know. But I'm like, yeah, but if you just Google, if you just look them up, you'll find videos about them abusing people. But they don't see it as abuse. They see it as he's just toxic, but I'm the one. Chrissy says in this situation, he was way more abusive than her. Oh, I mean, he was literally completely abusive. I would say she was toxic, but I'm not sure she was abusing him, but he was absolutely abusing her. So I think Alex so far is absolutely abusing her. And then she's probably toxic enough to be in the situation, but I don't know that she was abusing him. I'm not seeing any evidence that she abused him yet, but I am seeing evidence she engaged in toxicity, which is what she admitted. She admitted it. So I like, like she's already an upstanding more person because she's admitting to her faults while still making it clear, like you can be at fault and still be a victim. But I think the evidence here is overwhelming. It's awful and disturbing and has seriously shocked me. I'm still processing what's happened. This is one of the worst situations I've ever seen in my life. And I hope Alice is okay. It took a lot of courage to speak about this. But ultimately, as of recording, that is exactly where we are. And so for now, we're gonna have to wait to see what happens, right? Does more come out? Does Alex mm. respond? But in the meantime, does he respond? I am so curious. I mean, he's going to have to, to some extent. But anyways, shout out uh, to Philly D. Good coverage. I will say that there is that Google Doc if you guys want to check it out. I saw it on my Discord. I looked through it a little bit. Um, but I will say that ultimately toxic attracts a, to a, a toxic. And I will say that it's okay, I think, to call people out. I think it's also okay to seek redemption. I believe in redemption. If you guys watched Monday's video, it's really difficult for us to tell who is a person who's who's a good guy or a bad guy or a weak man or a strong man, but ultimately a person who takes accountability via their own values and is consistent is important, right? Let's see if Alex can do that. I doubt it, if I'm being honest, but she did it really well. She held herself accountable. She came out. She made it clear what she did wrong and she made it clear why she's coming out with the story and I'm about it. In my head in real life, my belly's being fed I'm okay, I'm just fine Yet all I do is whine Not to you in my mind Cause I know I don't make sense I've been nothing but blessed So why's my life a mess? Please tell me cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah, I'm sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool Da 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 da